This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots, so don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Amberlyn Reed. And today we are getting caught up. So if you see this outfit more than once, that's what's happened. So today we are talking about Amber's uh, video from three days ago as of today, which today is May 20th. And so this video was three days ago, and this is starting a new medicine, more doctor's appointments, and that can't take the heat. I'm looking forward to talking about this one. If you're in the live chat, you know I've already reacted to this in the live chat, but in this chat, we're going to spend a little bit more time getting a little bit more detailed, hopefully. Hopefully I'm going to have something intelligent to add to this. Um, there's been enough time, <laughs> enough, t enough time has elapsed that I think I can add, well, I should be pleasantly surprised, but I think I can still add stuff to this conversation. Um, just because like, I feel like in the lives, it's more kind of my snarky knee jerk reaction with an occasional like moment of clarity. And here I would just kind of want to focus more on the dark anthropology parts of this mainly because that's what i'm trying to do here if that made sense do, 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 do. so i have notes is what that boiled down to so one of the things that we're going to get to uh okay before we get too far into this i haven't done this in forever so i am an anthropologist by training i am a retired archaeologist those are my credentials and um i've just been kind of like making this dark anthropology thing up as i go so this is not a legitimate subfield of anthropology though though it is still built on anthropological theory and principles and that kind of stuff so if you s i've had a couple people reach out to me and i am terrible at replying to email and i apologize uh but i need to if people want to run with this feel free there's several papers that have been written in the wheelhouse of dark anthropology like they don't call it that they call it like the anthropology of manipulation or political anthropology that's all kind of the same thing it's basically looking at the the darker aspects of human society i just happen to be focusing mostly on youtube videos and particularly in particular the girl world so thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel thank you to my subscribers thank you to my members i have updated the end cards so that should be nice for everybody um thank you to everybody who's going to hit the thumbs up button and let's go ahead and get into this one of the things we're going to talk about when it comes around which is actually at the end of the video spoilers um we're going to talk about uh principles of covert mo uh, of covert motivations this is one of the dark anthropology principles that we'll be discussing and it's directly talking about amber's public confrontation with reaction channels specifically this time she's going after zachary michael and i have mixed feelings about it but in the end, it comes down to Amber's trying to shame a reaction channel because she didn't get what she wanted is effectively what's happening. What, whatever my opinion is of the situation, um, Zachary Michael's decisions are Zachary Michael's decisions and that that's, that's the end of it. But for Amber, it's, She's not able to look at things outside of her own personal sphere. And so she doesn't understand the decisions that go into, especially a large major channel like Zachary Michaels. So we'll talk about that more when we get to it, but things to look forward to. We'll also be talking about principles of power dynamics um, and perceived power dynamics, I guess will be the better term for that. I always say that Amber likes to think that she has more control over her audience than she actually does. Like Amber, Amber thinks she can send her little winged monkeys out to do her bidding on the internet. And it just doesn't work because she's almost always sending them out after someone who is more popular than her. And also she's not usually in the right. So when the, when she tries to pull these kind of stunts, I'm sure she gets some people who will go and do her bidding for her on the internet, but for the most part, it's not something like, not saying Zachary would ever do something like this, but if Zachary Michael were to say, hey, everybody go do X, 
they would probably have a much stronger result from that than Amber ever could. So uh, something we will talk about in these first few sections of Amber's videos is the principle of integration versus differentiation and also of dialectic overcoming big words. Basically, <laughs> we're going to talk about how Amber shares, overshares and vague posts when it's convenient for her because she's trying to create interaction between herself and her audience and she knows that when she vague posts, it creates speculation and that's a good thing for her. That creates a feedback loop for her. Um, and she also has learned that when she overshares, which she still tends to do, but she's really dialed it back a lot, that she tends to get backlash for that because people pay attention. And with differenti differentiation is how various aspects of her audience react to her, react to these situations. Like she does get some sympathy from members of her audience, usually newer members or people who just haven't given up on her for some reason. But she also gets a lot of criticism from people and she gets a lot of like middle ground kind of comments, just kind of like, yeah, we've seen you do this before. I wouldn't really say that's like hate or criticism exactly because it's not untrue. <laughs> even this, even this most recent new Ozempic journey that we're going to go on for however briefly it will at last we've already seen her do this so we as the audience already have a playbook for amber because amber among other things is very predictable she has a cycle for a reason it is it is identified and has been identified for years at this point because it's so noticeable right so so that's what we'll talk about when we get to that. The dialectic overcoming is Amber using Amber using various aspects of her life as a way to highlight that particular um, element in the greater public. Most of the time, Amber is not doing it because Amber doesn't think beyond herself for the most part. She, if it's not an immediate influence or repercussion within Amber's life. It doesn't typically hit Amber's radar, but the rest of the community does tend to draw parallels, not just between Amber and other videos, other uh, girl world personalities, but also from the greater aspect of just like the obesity epidemic in the United States and fat acceptance, health at every size. Amber is not a member. Amber is not a card carrying member of fat acceptance or Hayes. But she will, from time to time, fall back on rhetoric from those groups, though she will say with her own mouth that she is not, she doesn't follow those principles and she doesn't agree with those two movements, which is fine. But she still likes to fall back on this whole, like, doctors are stupid, they're only, they're discriminating against me because I'm morbidly obese and all of those other sorts of, like, key rhetoric points that fat acceptance and haze use because of course it couldn't possibly be the fact that yes you are actually morbidly obese and that is actually the cause of the majority of your problems and we can't tell which ones it is causing and isn't causing because you're so freaking obese so maybe lose some weight and we can figure the rest of it out but with the issue with the dialectic overcoming in amber is that because she creates such a confrontational atmosphere with her audience amber's always attacking her audience. Amber's always lecturing us and blaming us and shifting responsibility for her behaviors onto us. And it's not just the reaction community. When she does these kind of things, it kind of is like a, it's like a net and it just catches everybody in the audience in the same net, whether you're a supporter or not, which is actually why she loses so many supporters because the supporters also feel like they're being lectured, even though I don't think they're her intended audience. Amber doesn't know the difference. <laughs> But because she creates this confrontational atmosphere, when she tries, when she has moments where she could bring attention to a greater issue, it's lost because people are more focused on her attitude and her language versus the message that's actually being, that she's actually trying to get across. If she tries to get across any message. I, I'm still of the opinion that Amber is far too self-centered to really understand how to stand up for a greater message other than me, 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 me. So stay hydrated, folks. Okay, so I think that's enough preamble into this. So I have got her sped up 
I have her sped up to time and a quarter, which is common for this channel. So, uh, so yeah, let's let's dive in, shall we? Hey guys, welcome Hi. to a new vlog. Good morning, good morning. I actually have yay have a doctor's appointment. Super early, so let's go do that. What's super early for her? I know it's super early for me. Like I don't do shit before six a.m. Period. I'm not even awake, so that's super early for me. Super early for her could be like eleven a.m. And considering I don't think most doctors' offices even open until maybe nine, maybe I don't know. Mine does mine open before then? I have no idea because I don't schedule appointments that early. Okay, so I just got out of my doctor's appointment. I did crack a little in there, and I itched my eyebrow and I messed up my makeup. Oh my god, girl, you're just gonna have to go home and wipe it all off and put it all back on again because it's just you just look like a clown now. It's just it's all ruined. It's all gone. Sorry. She cries a lot. She says she cries a lot. The problem is, is Amber's so Amber's well known for trying to use emotional manipulation as a tactic to get sympathy from her audience that it's really hard to take her seriously when she says things like, I've been crying. Okay. Cause at this point it's kind of like, when aren't you crying? sort of a thing um so there's that and she's also already pulled this thing once with the doctor where she's like i've gone to the doctor and i was crying because of the information that he gave me but i'm not going to tell you anything about it this is where i said i think it was two videos ago now where i was like i i refuse to care about this particular arc only because she's not sharing any information and she's purposefully vague posting in order to create engagement because she couldn't possibly be bothered to create engaging material in the first place. So I refuse to care. We will address it because it is part of her videos and that's kind of the point of the, sh of the channel. But personally, I don't give a crap until something, until she's willing to actually sit down and share something or stops talking about it. I don't care, but I'm not her target. So it is what it is i'll just fix it when i get home i don't really care so i think the doctor that i saw today i think that he is going to be like my official doctor i really genuinely liked him i have a heart what does she mean i think he's going to be like has she been doctor shopping to the point where she's found a doctor that she likes now is that what she's telling us here without actually saying i've been doctor shopping kind of a thing and the other thing to keep in mind is amber is getting ready to Sing the praises of this doctor and she has done that every single time she's gone to a new specialist it starts off with they're the best thing that has ever happened they are better than toasted sliced bread no, they walk on water i'm gonna listen to every damn thing they say they're interested in getting me healthy and then 24 to 48 hours later they're the devil they were trying to murder me they wanted me to do x y and z and i know my body like every other person on 600 pound life and i know what they were telling me to do was wrong because doctors are stupid i mean it really is it really does have that fast of a turnaround sometimes hard time with doctors because people my size are discriminated against in health Gee, what's that sound like? Oh, fat acceptance. That's what that sounds like. Look, as I said earlier in my little tirade, the problem, the problem that a lot of FA and Hayes people have with the medical community is that when they go into for whatever issue they have, the doctors will say you're overweight and that's contributing to the problem. And they don't want to hear that being obese contributes to their medical issues. They just want a pill or a shot or a pat on the head to tell them that no 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 everything you're doing is fine here go home take take two of these and call me in the morning kind of a situation and they don't actually want to address the issue which is their morbid obesity they just want a solution to the symptom they just want the symptom to go away and that's fine but that's also not discrimination you're not being discriminated against you're still receiving medical care <laughs> You weren't turned away at the office. You weren't told that you were the wrong color and you couldn't get help here. You weren't, you know, told that you have the wrong immigration status and therefore they can't help you. They weren't, you weren't told that you weren't demeaned or dehumanized or just had the door slammed in your face in general. Like none of that has ever happened to any of them. 
they still go to the doctors, they still get seen, they still get treatment, they still get told what they should do to improve their health, and then they go home and they bitch about it because they don't want to do the things that they need to do to lose weight. That's what the issue is. The issue is not discrimination. And by saying shit like this, like, ugh, obese people get discriminated against in the doctor's office, it it like devalues the concept of dis of discrimination to the point where it becomes a joke and once the concept of discrimination becomes a joke it's impossible for us as a society to actually address real discrimination because every time we bring it up we think about fat acceptance and health at every size and how they're constantly claiming they're discriminated against when they go to the doctor's office the doctor not having chairs that fit you in their office is not discrimination. It just means you're the biggest patient they've ever had. That should tell you something other than my doctor is discriminating against me. Because yeah, they went out into the office and removed all of the chairs that you personally could have fit into. Removed all of them before you got there. Just so you couldn't have some place to sit. That's what happened. But anyway care that is a whole other topic for a whole other time but i genuinely liked him i literally cannot wait for her to talk about this topic because i cannot wait to tear it apart in real time like i have like really high respect for my doctor that i had in kentucky so it's like i need someone to match that energy i vaguely remember her going to a gp but as far as i understand she doesn't have she didn't have a gp for the rest of the time she was in kentucky even though she constantly said she did if she did she never went to see the guy so and last time I heard her talking about a doctor, it was a female anyway. So her as a general practitioner. So like she's just making shit up. G or we just ain't vibing. Just remember to be an advocate for yourself. Very important. I always stand by that. Okay, so now we're at Walgreens because I have to get a prescription. So people are pointing out that she might be on antibiotics again. I don't I don't recall her saying that in this video. She might say it in the most recent one, but we're not there yet. So I don't know where the antibiotics thing is coming from unless she's posted it on one of her other social medias and I haven't checked recently. So, um, but that's just another form of speculation. Probably it's antibiotics, but it, it could be anything. She, she might have a sinus infection. A lot of people are speculating that it might be her, her lipedema or her cellulitis acting up. So but they're basically, I think the reason why most people are saying that is because she used to have a ton of cellulitis flare-ups all the time when she was with Becky and when she was with um, Destiny. No, it was just with Beck, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe there were some with Destiny, but there were definitely a ton of them with Beck. So it's, it's, not, it's not unreasonable. It's not an unreasonable assumption to make. Of course, I gravitate towards the journals. Look at it. You cannot pour love into others if you do not pour love into yourself. Love that. And I really like this. She really does feel like... The way she tries to present herself in these videos is that she's like the most caring, most giving, most selfless person that she knows because she's constantly depleting herself and not taking care of herself in order to take care of others. And it's like, there is no one for you to take care of. You have animals. And that's it. You don't take care of your mother. She's perfectly fine taking care of herself. You don't take care of your grandmother. As far as it looks like, she's pretty independent as well. Like, who are you taking care of that you can't take care of yourself? You don't have any dependents that live with you at home. Um, and the argument can be made even when you lived with Beck, you weren't taking care of Beck. So other than paying for bills, you were pretty much just being really shitty to Beck for no apparent reason um so who are you taking care of that you can't take care of yourself first that is like totally my aesthetic i might get it now we're at some place called golden chicken i have no idea my mom wanted to come here so i got like a chicken salad this is an interesting moment and i just want to play it back for you guys i want you to listen to the way she talks and the way she looks around when she says it and the way she's like petting herself now we're at some place called golden chicken i have no idea my mom wanted to come here so i got like a chicken salad what I wanted you guys to see was, or more, more I wanted you to hear was, my mom wanted to come here, so I don't know. She's shifting the blame of 
eating at this particular restaurant onto her mother because this is like well it's a, it's a fast food restaurant of some variety and or fast casual i guess they call it and she knows that people will be critical of a what she chooses to eat here and b that the fact that she's eating out she needs to get over that it's not going to stop but instead of saying we are eating here we decided to eat here my mom suggested this it's this is my mom's fault i didn't want to eat here she's making it very clear this was not her decision this was her mother's decision and she's just going along with it as if that gives her some kind of superiority or res or remove some sort of responsibility for her food choices from her because she's going to be like there's just nothing i could eat here she got some roasted chicken and where did my voice just go and then obviously i got a diet dr pepper obviously for my salad came like this and then here's like the chicken salad part so i guess i just like put it on top of this i am really confused about this whole section honestly because like the salad and the chicken salad are in two separate containers and even when you go to like like a cafeteria or a like place where all of the food's in prepackaged kind of a thing if you get chicken salad it usually has the salad the chicken salad itself the stuff in that container already scooped into the actual salad or it's like off to the side of the actual salad so it's all in the same container so what it looks like she's done here is actually purchased two different items to mix together nothing wrong with that it's just weird it because she's kind of making it she's trying to play it off as if this was one thing and it's not we know amber doesn't a, amber doesn't shop off menu like she never picks an item that's already on the menu she always has to make her own it'd be this isn't like the the salad she got it looks like she got some kind of like chef salad and then decided to add chicken salad to it again nothing wrong with that until she adds the um the salad dressing to it later it smells good yay we get to watch her feed herself look at her She's like oh yeah i miss shovel tonguing my food into my face not bad do you like your chicken yeah it's a little dry but it's okay i love how she's just throwing the tomato i'm assuming she has a tray underneath her but otherwise she's just throwing those tomatoes onto the table <laughs> it kind of drives me nuts I'm taking my tomatoes out though <laughs> all the salad dressing i like how she's like ah there's an, a cup's worth of salad dressing in this sleeve of salad dressing therefore i must use the entire thing i barely use like i want to say i use like a third to maybe a half of those packets this is so much salad dressing <laughs> i love this moment that's coming up because it's one of the first times i've heard mama lynn talking to amber like she's a damn idiot it's not like the salad and go plate what do you mean their boxes are made to stick it up mm -hmm. oh. so mama lynn's like you're an idiot those aren't made to shake up like that and amber's like oh hmm she didn't take the criticism well and i wonder if this is one of the first times that mama lynn has pushed back like that or if like mama lynn's been talking like this to her for a while i don't know it's interesting because usually when her girlfriends talk to her this way amber gets really snotty right immediately afterwards there you go. oh yeah this looks good okay guys so i have been home for like 20 minutes oh my god 20 whole minutes i'm actually about to call a med spa place so my doctor's appointment i will actually explain why i went to begin with probably do that in this vlog if i don't probably in the next i can't lie this one but while i was there i just wanted you know a professional's opinion on semaglutide and what you know he thought of me getting it from a med spa and he actually highly recommends it. i don't think he did i'm just going off of her body language here on amber this is a liar's face this is where she's making stuff up I'm not saying she didn't have a discussion with the doctor about these things. I'm just saying the conversation didn't go the way Amber's going to frame it. But that's not uncommon for Amber. Amber hears what she wants to hear. And if she doesn't hear what she wants, she will change the story to make it fit what she wants to hear. And this is one of those times. I'm not, we'll never know exactly what was said because we weren't there. Um, but just going off of her body language and this it's it's really 
evident to me that she's making things up or she's at least embellishing what at, what was actually said here so and he actually highly recommends that i do that i'm actually about to call the med spa right now so yeah i'm pretty sure it'll just be like my first appointment will be a simple consultation but we'll see so i'm gonna call i'll be right back well, well darn there was no answer so i did leave a voicemail but i feel confident in this decision because i know she must have called them because i've seen the video after this so like I was debating back and forth, like, do I want to try this? But my doctor today, like he explained some of the science behind it and why he thinks it's a good like fit for me. I don't think the doctor didn't talk to her about semiglutide or ozempic or anything like that. I, I think he probably did. She's a perfect candidate for it. But every time she talks, every time she gets ready to tell this story, she looks down here and she won't make eye contact until she's ready to say something where she has to like stare the camera down. And it's it's not an honesty gesture so that actually made me feel like a little bit more hopeful also she keeps checking her mm. oh she's straight lying it's times like these where i'm like i think this is just her her body language like telling on her tattletaling on her because i think deep down inside she has no interest in losing weight or anything like that and this is just one of those like hail mary movements this is like weight watchers Instead of going back on Weight Watchers time and time and time again, we're going to hop back and forth from Ozempic over and over and over again, or uh, semi-glutide at this point, over and over and over again. I think that's what we're starting to see here, is instead of like going back onto Weight Watchers, like she, keep, like she used to continuously fall back on, I think she's going to start f continuously falling back on semi-glutide and GPL-1s because she knows other people have used it and it has worked for them towards the situation for sure but depending on if they call back today or maybe i'll call back i'm not gonna har she won't call back harass them or anything but, but i am like kind of impatient when i'm really excited for something no thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands if you know you know but i know how to have patience i know that do you they have other clients and stuff they need to worry about but do they <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> Amber's not good at sharing, especially not sharing attention. Notice how she has to continuously check herself out. She can't even share her own attention. But I'll definitely give you guys an update um, whenever this moves along. Okay, Yay. guys, so it is time. If you guys remember my new makeup purse that I got, makeup purse, makeup bag, it says essentials on top. I don't care. Uh, this is one of those moments where Amber's trying to live her influencer dream where she believes that if she shows us a product that she's used that we're all gonna rush out and go buy it or we're gonna tell her wow that's so clever I never would have thought to do that or something to that that way it I have started watching more Alexandra Rodriguez because apparently I hate myself but she Alexandra does the exact same shit like and it's it's alex is not copying amber amber is mirroring to a t alexandra i'm sure if i go far enough back in alexandra's stuff she probably bought a clear makeup case at some point the funny part about amber mirroring and mimicking alexandra rodriguez is that alex doesn't have an original thought in her head like everything Alexandra Rodriguez does, she's either discovered on Instagram or Twitter and she just does what people on Instagram and Twitter do. So she's, she's not even setting a trend. She's 100% jumping on it and, and just following trends. She's just a trend follower and she's really popular for doing it, I guess. Amber maybe doesn't realize that. <laughs> And so I think that's the other reason why Amber's always so late to various trends is because she doesn't do it until she sees one of these people on YouTube that she follows do it. And by the time they've posted their video of it, the trend's already either dying or dead. And Amber's like, hell yeah. And then she jumps on it way too late. And then it just looks, it just looks cringy. This is what I have been using. And it's just like overflowing. Like it's so cute. I love it. But it's just like not big enough. Oh my god. That's Trisha Paytas. She's never gotten over wanting to be an ASMR star. Someone in the comments section was like, Oh my god, I can't believe how disrespectful she's being to all of her stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what you were expecting. 
Uh, <laughs> this is this is Amber. Amber has no respect for her stuff. Oh yeah, I like something else. I want to point out since she's showing us this herself. This is Amber's leg. This is Amber's other leg. This is all Amber's belly. All of this, this is this is Amber's fat fat apron. Her legs are like every other person on 600 pound life. She has to sit in the splits because she can't her legs can't come together anymore. She can't sit like a dainty girl because she can't get her legs together. <laughs> and I'm just pointing it out because she's giving us this full frontal seated position that she's giving us this time. I also want to point out that she's starting to have I don't know if she's starting to pick her skin again. I'm sure that's what she'll tell us, but she's starting to bruise up again and her wounds aren't healing properly. So take that how you want to take it. I like this so much more and it's cute. Easier to see what makeup I need to use and pull out. You guys, I have lived in a lot of a lot of places, I will say. Cool. Oklahoma might be the most moody when it comes to weather. Hang on, I gotta put my glasses on. Indiana, we had a saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it'll change. I pretty much everywhere I've ever lived, and I've lived a number of places at this point, everybody pretty much thinks they have the weirdest weather. So. Like one minute? Okay. It's nice and cool. The sun is out. We're feeling good. Next Oklahoma. Next minute, it's sprinkling and freezing. And I'm just like, I really don't get it. But it's called spring. What do you want? You know what? If it's doing that in the middle of summer, then I'll be like, okay, that's weird. It's spring. It's not officially summer yet. We still got another month of spring to get through, you guys. You may not know it, but trust me, we do. You gotta vibe with it, you know what I'm saying? So, I didn't harass them. Didn't even call them back, not one time, but a few hours later, they called me back. Oh my god. Oh, shit. I knew that was gonna happen. Had to fix my lights. They decided to fall. We good now, though. Um... What were we talking about? Oh, Amber was telling us about how she got called back from the med spa. And my appointment is scheduled for the med spa. I think I was making some kind of joke about, oh my god, they must have realized that the Amberlynn Reed called them and they just couldn't call her back fast enough. I'm kidding. So, yeah, and it's scheduled actually pretty soon. Oh yeah, and by the way... What is that face? She's actually pretty excited about this. Well, she's as excited as she gets about things. Checking myself out, petting my hair, smiling. Yeah, she's pretty. She is really grooming herself and duck lipping. She's been doing this this entire video. It's this this duck lipping and the grooming and the kissing noises that she makes. I think there is somebody. I think she does have an actual Valentine now, or there's somebody she's trying to court real hard. This is her trying to convince us face. This, this is convincing us. This is her, like, honest convincing face. And we're duck lipping again. Sorry. I guess that's what I caught was the weird duck lip face. The not duck lip duck lip face. She's preening. She's preening and she's duck lipping and she's making, like, noises a lot. I think, I think she's trying to impress somebody. So somebody must be watching. Someone she's wanting to look cute for must be watching. Oh yeah, and by the way, I did get that journal. That I oh my god, I was really concerned you wouldn't buy that journal. I saw it at Walgreens. I thought it was super cute, so I had to get it. But yeah. I am about to start taking some antibiotics. And ah, there we go, the antibiotics. I must have missed that the first time. My bad. And I'll explain more, but right now I'm actually about to go outside and wait for my mom because we're going to go to bingo. I genuinely just love playing. B I N G O B I N G O. Playing the game, you guys know me. I love games. I've always loved games. She does love games. That that is a true statement. Like we we have plenty of day de de we have plenty of years of evidence of her liking to play games. And it's just fun. So yeah. It's like that she's you know what was it? It was either the last video or the video before that where she had like this meltdown over the fact that people some one person had called her out for not being able to keep up with the bingo caller and so now she's sped this up to the point where you can't even hear the guy calling the numbers correctly 
And so now you can't, you can't know if she didn't get a number. Call me out now. That, that's what this is. She's, she sped it up so fast that you can't hear the numbers. So you don't know if she's missing a number or not. I do actually kind of like this. This is fascinating to me. Oh, wow. My mom's boyfriend got it. Yay. So it is time for questions of the day. Hooray. First question. Where did that pink dyed candle go to? Like, I notice it's not on your shelf anymore. What happened to the candle, Amber? Question. What happened to your hernia? Uh, nothing happened to it. It's still, uh, chilling. Amber, can you take a clip of yourself with this? And she, uh, doesn't give a shit. So why are you asking her about it? Seat belt buckled while your mom is driving to prove the haters wrong, please. I mean, I guess I could. But I'm not going to. <laughs> this is where she goes where she thinks this is stupid and she's not going to reply to it. She picks these questions, by the way. She doesn't have to answer these questions. So I'll try to remember to do that tomorrow. Uh -huh. Your mom has long hair like you. Has she always had long hair? Actually, yes. We grew our hair out around the same time. It was around when I was like, I'd say about 14 during like the trial run to live with my parents. If All right. So this is an interesting moment because, and I think I pointed this out in the live, Amber gets mad at people for calling her out for trash talking or down talking her family, especially her family in her past. And she got really mad about that. And she was like, I never, I never talk down about my family. I never trash talk my family. And this is something that I pointed out in the live. So if you've already heard this before, you know what I'm going to say. Um, Amber, the, the words and the tone that Amber chooses to use when she talks, those are the things that most people are calling her out for when they say you talk down about people or you're being nasty to people or you're trash talking your family she's going to say and it's going to be almost verbatim to another time way back in the past now where she was telling us a story the same story this exact same story and she'll say, she's going to say something to the effect of um what was it? Oh, uh, my parents had a trial run to see if they were fit parents and they failed, obviously. There are so many other ways that you could have put that and so many other words that you could have used instead of those words in that way to convey that your parents, to convey that your parents did not successfully complete the trial. Okay. As opposed to, they failed, obviously. And she doesn't hear herself. People would say this stuff all the time, especially during the lives with her and Beck, about how Amber was being mean to Beck or was just being a bitch in general. And... Amber would always go, no, I'm not saying anything mean. And it's like, it's not exactly, it is what you're saying. It is the, the words that you're choosing to use. But it's also the tone and the way that you're delivering them that make it terrible. And this is one of those situations. It's the words and the way she just, she decides to tell this. It's almost like she's trying to make a joke out of it, but it's not funny. It's not even funny with her telling the story and it's her lived experience and it's still like that, is that supposed to be a joke most people don't joke about that i don't think it's funny kind of a thing but this does go back to the integration versus differentiation amber is trying to tell this story i guess to maybe make us feel something for her <laughs> pity sympathy anything but because of the way she delivers it the audience has a different reaction to it than she's intending or that she's expecting. And that's the difference between integration versus differentiation. The differentiation is occurring when the audience is not having the reaction to this heartwarming story that she's telling us that she expected us to have. Like she's telling us a story about how her and her mom grew their hair out at the same time. And it's like a bonding thing for her. At least that's how it's how it seems like she's trying to make it sound. 
But then she pops off with that. Oh, they didn't make it, obviously. And it kind of destroys that warmish, fuzzy-ish moment that she almost kind of created there. And then she'll get mad because the audience didn't have the aww moment that she was expecting them to have. And, and it's because the words and the tone and the things that you say and the way that you say them screw that up for you every time. If you guys don't know, I was in foster care from 8 to 18, 9 to 18. I was about 8, 9. <laughs> but there was about like a year and a half where I was so... I feel like I would remember when I went into foster care, but that's just me. A ward of the state, which means I was still technically a foster kid. And my parents weren't like legal guardians because I was still bored of the state, but they wanted to give them like a trial run to see like if they were fit to be parents again. They definitely failed that. <laughs> it's just the wish they definitely failed that. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Like, are you, are you talking to your mom? Like when you relive this moment with your mom, do you talk to her this way? Obviously, you failed being a mother. <laughs> I I just that's what I'm talking about in this phase. It's just like it's like it's some kind of inside joke. This is the same kind of face that she would make when she would complain about Crystal, about Destiny, about Beck. She would complain about them. And about the ways that they annoy her or the things that they do that annoyed her. And she would look at the camera and the audience and kind of like this, eh, eh, kind of a way. And it never got the reaction she wanted it to get because it, she, it was always just her kind of being a butt monkey about it. And the audience could see it, but Amber didn't. And so she would get upset because the, the audience thought she was being mean. Because she was being mean. You're being mean, Amber. <laughs> But a lot of people get confused when I was like, yeah, when I was this year's old and living with my parents, it's because there was moments where I did live with them. Out of the decade that I was a foster kid, it was about a year and a half. Did you see that Zachary and Michael no longer uh, not I don't know where the hell that came from because the question was about her and her mom growing their hair out. Like, her and her mom having the same length of hair. And it ended up being a story about y'all are stupid and can't keep your dates straight. These are the dates I was in foster care. Okay, cool, thanks wants to play Fortnite with you. I did see that. Okay, this is actually important and I kind of want to back up a little bit. So remember earlier, all the way at the beginning of this now, I said we were going to talk about, um, remember all the way back at the beginning where I said we were going to talk about um, covert motivations and power dynamics. And this is where we're going to talk about it because this is where she's going to lay in to Zachary Michael for rescinding their offer to play Fortnite together. Because remember, guys, Amber is a hardcore gamer chick now and has been for a really long time, such a long time that no one can remember it. <laughs> but when Zachary Michael found out that Amber was playing Fortnite, they got very excited and in the moment did what anybody who's super excited about this was and was like hell yeah let's group up let's go play and like i think i don't know at least half of the reaction channels that i watch if not all of them were like yes we want to see this but zachary listened to his audience and probably had a bit of a reflective moment after that and was like i don't really want to mix Fortnite, which is something that I play for enjoyment and has nothing to do with girl world. I don't want to mix that up with girl world because I don't want it to be ruined for me if the in the off chance this goes south, which the potential for it to go south is actually why we all wanted to watch. So let's be honest. So Zachary did rescind the offer that they made to Amber to play Fortnite. Amber is butthurt about it. Understandably. It, nobody likes having an offer made and then having it, you know, yanked out from underneath them. Especially since Amber has has a YouTuber crush on Zachary Michael. She loves Zachary. She loves Alex's Shook. She loves Yo Mama. She loves H3H3. She loves Trisha Paytas. She has these YouTube crushes. She has these extremely parasocial relationships with these creators because half of them might know who she is like obviously the reactors do but the rest of them are like I, I think I heard her name once or twice before you know kind of a thing so 
her feelings got hurt that Zachary rescinded the the offer. Again, understandable. So Amber is going to now use her platform here to kind to try to shame Zachary Michael for rescinding their offer. And the reason this isn't going to work for her is because she's also using it as a moment to go after reaction channels, which she will take any opportunity she has to go after reaction channels because she she doesn't like us we, because we watch her we watch her videos we make comments on them we analyze them you know she she's a moment in history guys i mean say what you will about her this this is her content might be boring but amber amber the amberverse is actually very fascinating um so of course people are going to react to it so with the power dynamic aspect of this is Amber's kind of trying to speak to her audience and to Zachary Michael's audience and to the re the reaction channel's audiences by saying basically y'all a bunch of little bitches and that's fine because she's like you guys cater to your audience and that's bad and I think it was quirky love rose was mentioning in the comments of one of the videos is that what Amber doesn't understand is Amber's a vlog channel. Amber's a Amber for for good or for ill. Amber is a lifestyle vlog channel. We may not like the lifestyle, but that's what she is. And that gives Amber a lot of freedom actually that she doesn't use in my opinion. But she has the she has the ability to vlog whatever she wants and people are going to watch reaction channels exist to react this is part of the ecosystem of the amberverse and any other verse like this like anyone who has a reaction community built around their their main channel this is the the ecosystem that we exist in amber creates content reaction channels react to it that's how it works amber tends to react to the reaction channels and then the reaction channels react to amber and it's just this big this big circle it's the circle of life it's the circle of reaction so where amber has the freedom to do anything in her vlogs because they're her vlogs she doesn't have a niche she doesn't have a specialty like her big claim to fame is she's annoying annoying obnoxious and can't lose weight even though she's on a weight loss journey that's her shtick reaction channels do have to cater to their audiences to some degree because if trust me i know if i start doing something completely unrelated to this channel which i have done the the reaction to those videos is much less and youtube doesn't know what to do with it as far as the algorithm is concerned youtube's like what the hell and those and one of the reasons why those videos don't do well is because it doesn't know where to push those videos like i i've done a couple um live plays of fallout recently and i'm i'm moving those over onto my gaming channel and i'll put the link to the gaming channel in the uh, description here but the point the reason i did that was a i have a larger audience here and i wanted to get some eyeballs and b i couldn't live stream on my gaming channel right away because i had to like ask permission to live stream first and it took them like 24 hours to like it was a whole thing anyway i can live stream over there now but because I put those few videos here, um, YouTube didn't know what to do with them. It didn't push the videos. I had, I enjoyed the react, the interaction that I had with people while I was playing the game, but that content needs to be on a different channel. This channel, people come to this channel to watch me talk about this, to talk about dark anthropology, to talk about Amber. A couple of you actually seem to like my personality. I don't understand it, but here you go. You know, that kind of a thing. If I just suddenly decided to stop reacting to Girl World altogether and just turn this channel into like a, I don't know, a Lego channel, I enjoy the hell out of Legos and I know some of you do as well, but uh, do all near 6,000 of you? No, that's the point. If I want this channel to do well, and I do, then I have to tailor the content on this channel to my viewers. Amber doesn't have to do that. And so Amber thinks she's got a got you moment here where she goes after Zachary and says, you're just catering to your audience. And Zachary's a massive channel. So of course, Zachary is going to cater to their audience. It only makes sense that they would do so. Zachary has a lot more leeway 
on their channel than maybe a smaller channel like mine does because I know Zachary does all kinds of reactions to like cooking channels and lifetime uh yeah the, the TLC shows he also reacts to other per people in the girl world like Zachary has a niche that he Zachary has a niche that they fill very nicely and Zachary knows what their audience likes to watch as much as we the reaction world would love to see Zachary Michael and Amber Lynn play Fortnite together we would all just kind of like to see Amber Lynn play Fortnite in general it doesn't fit into what his what, it doesn't fit into what Zachary Michael's channel is about and so it only makes sense that Zachary would resend that again and I also mentioned much earlier in this tirade Zachary wants to keep his 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 work separate from his play and Zachary's play is Fortnite and Zachary doesn't want to mix Fortnite up with girl world for obvious reasons this being one of them so it makes very good sense that Zachary was like and second thought never mind all right anyway let's let's sit through this Foster kid it was about a year and a half did you see that Zachary Michael no longer wants to play Fortnite with you I did see that I did kind of just goes to show that he really does cater to his audience and I definitely don't mean that in a good way I feel like a lot of we know reaction channels have to god forbid amber actually catered to her audience because if she would do a third of the things that her audience suggests that she does she would have a far better channel and i'm not even talking about the weight loss aspect of it if she would just because she she used to do this thing where she would ask the audience what they would like to see on her channel and then never do any of it like why are you even asking to do that because they don't want to take the heat so they kind of can't think for themselves they don't film for themselves they don't make their own decisions they really let their audience kind of make the decisions for them because zach's initial reaction was super excited and wanted to his initial reaction was super excited to play fortnite with me and then he got some comments he's afraid of the heat so he's like eh, not doing it and i know he's gonna have every rebuttal under the sun to reply to this this is this this is my favorite part I know Zachary's going to have every rebuttal under the sun, but nothing you can say will make it up to me. I don't think he cares, Amber. Pretty sure Zachary does not care. If Zachary cared, Zachary wouldn't have rescinded the invitation in the first place. So. It sucks being low man on the totem pole, doesn't it? video because i know he's reacting to it hello no rebuttal is gonna mean anything to me i just think it's silly that like you can have such a like a 180 all because like you're trying to impress your audience and you don't want to get heat for something i don't know it's just a little strange but it i love that she feels like she's owed an apology here that's what's really happening with this whole like there's nothing you can say she wants him to say something she wants him to apologize for it she wants him to come crawling back and because nobody puts amber in a corner kind of a thing you know she's you know, how dare you, Zachary, reject Amber? It's Amber, Zachary. Are you insane? You're never going to get a better opportunity than this. <laughs> it's just like, it's one of those moments where you can really tell how highly she thinks of herself, you know? It, because on the one hand, she acts like they have some kind of like personal relationship because this is her parasocial problem. She thinks they have some kind of personal relationship because she'll send him DMs sometimes, which is weird in my book. But she also gets royally offended that Zachary is like, yeah, no, you're not important enough. And this really ticks her off because in her head, they are bests. They are BFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
uh, reaction to it, I'm going to keep doing it, you know? And it's unfortunate that there are some people that don't like it. But, you know, as a creator, you got to balance those things, you know? Which is why we're doing these style videos on top of doing lives. Someone quoted me and said, it makes me sad thinking about eating lamb, which is something I said in my last video. You won't try this one little piece of lamb? No, 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 no. It makes me sad thinking about eating lamb. I have nothing nice to say about when she makes a no, 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 no noise because it, it, it flips a, it, it makes me aggressive. <laughs> makes me angry. And I can't tell you why. I really, I, I don't have a reason for it. It's just like it pushes that button that I didn't know I had until she does it. Yeah, you're eating chicken. They're both animals, so what's the difference? So I know this is like hypocritical, but I think it's hypocritical for a lot of meat eaters. There's so I don't think I'm a hypocritical meat eater. I'm pretty blunt about eating meat. There's, there's nothing <laughs> like... Certain animal we'll eat, and there's certain animal we won't. We will easily eat a cow, but we won't eat a cat. Like I, I've, I say this every time someone tries to throw this particular argument in my face. You wouldn't eat your cat, would you? No, I won't eat my cat. Your cat's on the menu. Hell, you're on the menu. How does that? I don't think that makes me a hypocrite at all. No, you can't eat my cat. You can't eat my partner. I might eat yours. And I kind of figure like a lot of people are like that. You know, if we're in this we must be cannibals situation, I'm pretty sure the cat's the least problem on the list. You know, we don't have to eat cat here. It's not an issue. Am I going to eat? any other type of meat producing animal that isn't toxic to me yeah probably you know i'm not too keen on having blowfish but i'll probably try any other fish in the sea you know it's just it's these arguments where they think they've got a gotcha argument that's not a gotcha argument i'm not not eating an animal because i think it's cute and cuddly i'm not eating the animal because i don't need to that could never in a million years even thinking about that like gives me the creeps it makes me want to like cry and hide and just no just that moment this makes me want to cry and hide and no you are never that emotional about anything you aren't even that emotional when your own animals who you claim to love above everything else are injured or sick or in trouble you really want me to believe that the thought of eating a lamb causes you that level of emotional distress? No, Amber. No. You're just a hypocrite, I guess. I don't even think you're a hypocrite for not wanting to eat lamb. Just say you don't want to eat lamb. I don't eat lamb because I don't like the way it tastes. Okay? <laughs> it's fine. Look at that. It's really easy to do. Uh, I don't eat veal. A, I think veal farms are horrific, and B, I've had it and I don't like it. It doesn't taste good to me. Crazy talk. <laughs> it's just, we live in a country where you don't have to eat things if you don't like them. It's okay. It's like people will eat a chicken, but they won't eat a dog. Like, literally, ew. There's, like, levels to these things. I don't know. Have you ever had dog? Don't knock it till you try it. It's for me, and I feel like lamb is in the same category as, like, a cat or a dog, in my opinion. I I mean, I guess if I had a lamb and it was my pet, sure, you're not going to eat lammy, or I'm not going to eat lammy, but can't say that my neighbor wouldn't be staring at it. I don't know why, but like little lambs, I just cannot imagine that ever touching my lips. Anyway, I hate that. I cannot ever imagine that touching my lips. People don't talk like this, Amber. Stop talking like this. You just make yourself sound ill-educated and ignorant. Stop doing that. You you wonder why people make fun of you about the way you talk and then you do this. Remember, she's supposedly like super duper uber smart, like Mensa level smart, and also reads all these books and stuff and things and is constantly researching things on the internet too and yet cannot put together an actual sentence. Anyway. Anyway, so that's the end of this vlog. I hope that you guys did enjoy. I think now because I'm uploading more frequently, my videos will be shorter. But I, I think now that I'm uploading more frequently, I'm going to put less effort into my videos. Gotcha. hope that you still enjoy them. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Enjoy is a very strong word. All right, so... I did a lot of talking at the beginning of the video, and I know I did a lot of talking at certain points in the video where I was talking about 
random principles and I, I just kind of want to recap a couple things. Um, you know, we we're talking about the, the principle of covert motivations where Amber basically uses bits and pieces of her personal life to her own advantage um, to basically drum up things like engagement and monetization not in a way like oh it's a therapeutic moment or it's not like that it's she's using it purposefully to monetize and um get, and get the audience talking which is i mean it's fine they're her, it, they're her stories the problem is is she gets irritated excuse me the problem is is she gets mad when anyone else uses her own words to talk about the same topics and that's where the problem starts to happen. We talked about the principle of power dynamics where Amber's trying to use her audience to turn against various reaction channels. And again, I personally don't think it works out very well for her because I just don't think she has the reach that she thinks she does, but it doesn't stop her from trying. And th there's also, I forgot about this note, um, viewers reaction to reaction channels is it is a type of power <clears throat> is a type of reverse power on her because reaction channels build their own inertia and their own power by analyzing and critiquing and dissecting her narrative and there's a lot of people who will say oh i only watch amber through various reaction channels and that's that's the power dynamic that this is also discussing is there are people that will not directly interact with amber's channel but will still consume her which will consume her videos through other channels which shifts the power away from amber and onto the reaction channels if that made sense um we talked about integration versus different differentiation and that's where Amber could be using her own personal experiences to draw attention to greater issues. Like, for instance, when she tries to talk about in this video, um, medical discrimination against obese people. And I had a moment because I don't believe that that actually happens. And that was Amber in her own way. Maybe I'll give her some small shadow of a doubt here that she was trying to bring attention to medical discrimination through her own story. We'll pretend like that's what was happening. Um, that's integration. The differentiation is my reaction to it. It was not the sympathetic, oh, that's so horrible. I can't believe that they discriminated against you, Ambie. Instead, I was like, no, this is bullshit. This is fat acceptance rhetoric. This is Hayes rhetoric. And there are other moments throughout her videos where she's sharing bits and pieces of her personal life, like the story where she's talking about her parents um, and being in foster care. You could argue that that might be a moment where she could use her personal experiences to bring more attention to the foster care system or what it's like to be a foster kid or just, you know, like life after foster care. Um, but various people will have different reactions to that story. And that's where the differentiation occurs is the reaction that the audience has to the story, as opposed to being supportive of the, the, the story or going, oh, wow, I didn't know that about X, Y, Z. That's the differentiation part happening there. Um, the dialectic overcoming, we kind of touched on that. I don't think I did a very good job on that, but this is basically Amber and her community addressing and responding to various controversies and challenges. Um, Zach being a perfect example of this. Amber did not react well to sorry, Zach rescinding their invitation to play Fallout, not Fallout, <laughs> to play Fortnite. And this is where this is where Amber's again trying to drum up sympathy and support for herself and her channel and kind of turn some ire and annoyance onto Zachary Michael's channel. But again, because Amber has an incredibly confrontational way of doing things and also her audience does not support her the way she thinks they do, it kind of has almost a reverse effect, at least in the reaction world. And that's... It just doesn't do what she expects it to do. But that's dialectic overcoming. Usually you would use this in a way to like 
kind of rally the audience around whatever it is you're talking about you're able to pull people to you not necessarily a hug box but maybe more of like a motivational speech or something like that you know rah 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 go go team go but because amber is like if you don't like me you're the devil then everybody just kind of turns on her because they're like i'm not the devil and you're a terrible person why would i like you and that kind of like creates that feedback loop going on there so those were the principles that we kind of covered in this video i hope to some degree again if you guys have questions about this stuff i'm making it up as i go along so go ahead and put questions down in the comment section they do help me out as far as seeing where i need to clarify things and you know and if there's something that i can clarify i will so if you've made it this far in the video go ahead and put put a chicken down in the comment section as your emoji uh, because they went to that chicken place that i vaguely remember what happened there and there was chicken salad involved so obviously put a chicken and a salad obviously uh yeah so that's your emoji if you would like if you'd like to leave a comment feel free to leave a con feel free to leave a comment thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel thank you to my members thank you to my scri subscribers the cards should be updated and thank you to everybody who's gonna hit the thumbs up button and if you made it this far in the video you may as well subscribe i put this stuff out fairly regularly and i will see everybody in the next video bye this is my outro music you can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing this is my outro music thank you for watching see you next time